Hello, friends, fiends, and fellow YubiTubers, and welcome to episode 685 of the Daily Comic and Collectible. Today, the collectible of the day is the Hasbro Toys, Marvel Comics, Marvel Legends Series, Retro 375 Collection, Venom Action Figure. Joined with reporter Eddie Brock, the symbiote Venom has only one plan, getting revenge on the amazing Spider-Man. With over 80 years of entertainment history, Marvel has become a cornerstone of fan collections around the world. This Marvel Legends 3.75-inch Venom action figure features multiple points of articulation for that true-to-form retro feel. It also features a premium design, detail, and intricate deco for displaying in your Marvel collection. This Venom action figure is inspired directly from the Marvel comics and designed after the 1980s packaging of Days Gone By with updated logos and artwork. Plus, as a bonus touch, they added the Kinner logo for nostalgia. This figure was released in 2022 by Hasbro Toys. Now, the comic of the day is Venom, Volume 4, Issue Number 3, with a cover date of August 2018. This is part of the Rex arc, with story by Donny Cates, art by Ryan Stegman, and cover by Ryan Stegman. This issue is titled Rex Part 3. Continuing directly from issue number two, Eddie Brock is trapped within the mental world of the Venom symbiote. Eddie wonders what happened to send the symbiote into a berserk rage. Opening his eyes, which appear black with jagged red spirals for irises and pupils, he recalls that Spider-Man kicked him in the head. As the berserk Venom, indwelled by the symbiote god, towers over a terrified Miles Morales and leans forward to eat him, Eddie speaks through it and tells Miles to kill him. Miles punches Venom in the face and then grabs his tongue, zapping him with a Venom blast. Freed from the symbiote's god's influence, Eddie apologizes to Miles and thanks him, but Miles attacks Eddie and calls him a monster. As Miles pummels him, Eddie wonders what his beef is and notes that with the symbiote dazed, he needs to finish this quickly. Transforming into Venom, he catches Miles' foot and lightly tosses him into a wall, restraining him with webbing. Miles shouts that Venom hurt his mother. And when Venom asks what he means, Miles explains that Venom, or something like him, put his father in the hospital and killed his mother. Eddie retracts the symbiote from his face and introduces himself, saying he doesn't know who Miles is and to the best of his knowledge, didn't hurt his mother. Noting that they have more pressing matters to worry about, Eddie states that if it turns out that he did hurt Miles or his mother, they can settle things later. Eddie proposes they team up to stop the symbiote dragon, which Miles reluctantly agrees to, though he insists on taking Venom down afterwards. Venom cuts Miles free, quipping that he's not their first Spider-Man, and then asks if he can use his electric attack again. Miles states that it's called a Venom Blast, noting the irony when Venom compliments the name. As they swing towards the symbiote dragon, Miles states he can release it all at once in a devastating attack that leaves him exhausted. Catching sight of the symbiote dragon, Miles asks what it is, and Venom explains that it's an ancient symbiote, more powerful than his own, brushing aside Miles insulting him. Venom asks why the Avengers and X-Men aren't intervening, disbelieving Miles when he states that Celestials are falling out of the sky everywhere. Dodging a missile, Miles wonders why they're not having any effect, 
given that Flame and Sonics were supposed to hurt symbiotes. Venom notes he's not sure, and will need to get Miles close enough to tag it with his Venom Blast. But Miles, not looking forward to the risk of being eaten. Inspired, Venom yanks Miles' webline out of his hand, and he falls into the symbiote dragon's mouth. As it swallows, and then tries to eat him as well, Venom calls out to Miles to hurry up. Miles suddenly unleashes a maximum power Venom Blast that inside the symbiote dragon's stomach causes it to collapse and let out a sound that Eddie registers as a thousand voices shrieking in pain and horror. Venom lands and watches as the symbiote dragon unravels. Hearing the voices, his own symbiotes among them, roaring, screaming, and singing inside of his head. Suddenly, a towering masculine humanoid deity with pale skin, white hair, eyes with black sclera, and red irises, and long arms tipped with clawed fingers emerges from the symbiote biomass that had once been the dragon. Clad in black plate armor, with red dragon emblems almost identical to Venom's spider emblems. Holding the unconscious Miles with one hand, the deity calmly asks if he belongs to Venom, and then tosses Miles at Venom's feet. Venom checks on Miles and is relieved to see that he's still alive. The symbiote retracting from him is a show of submission to the deity. Suddenly, an attack helicopter aims a spotlight at the figure and Venom and orders them to surrender. However, the deity responds by casually reaching out with one hand, an arm forming out of the mass of symbiote biomass behind him, grabbing the helicopter and crushing it, despite Venom demanding he put it down. Now enraged, Eddie lets the symbiote's rage and bloodlust take over. But the deity smiles and states that Venom's berserk form looks beautiful. As Venom slashes at him, the deity instantaneously reforms and condescendingly states that he's merely an avatar and that his true self is far, far away. Reaching out with one hand, the deity causes the Venom symbiote to explode off Eddie's body. Forming a dome of symbiote biomass around them, the deity ignores Eddie demanding to know who and what he is, telling the Venom symbiote to come to him. As it coils around him and sits in his hands, the deity asks the Venom symbiote, who he calls his child, what it's doing on Earth. Noting that the symbiote has been shut out and silenced by its host, leaving it broken inside. As Eddie pleads for the deity not to take the symbiote from him, he ignores him and states that the Venom symbiote has been infected by humanity. As the deity says he will burn the weakness from the Venom symbiote, which shrieks as its eye spots grows yellow and its teeth elongated into fangs. Eddie crawls towards the deity, demanding he stop, and the deity turns and grabs him by the throat. Sprouting a fanged maw and prehensile tongue, the deity introduces himself as No! Lord of the Abyss, and God of the Symbiotes. This story is continued in Venom, Volume 4, Issue Number 4. Geek Fact! This issue is a key issue, featuring the first full appearance of Null, the creator and God of the Symbiote race. It also connects the spiral emblem associated with Null as referenced in Cthulhu mythology.
It also features Noel's partial origin. Noel was the first being that existed in nothingness that preceded the creation of the current Marvel Universe. Bonus Geek Fact Noel didn't create his symbiote army, becoming their god, until after Gore the God Butcher stole his necro sword, called All Black. Advertising Ad Fact Universal Orlando Resort Three, two, one. Smash Cuny Vacations Feel the rage of the incredible whole poster. Swing alongside your friendly neighborhood wall crawler on the amazing adventures of Spider-Man. And more! Marvel Superhero Island is your headquarters for epic encounters. Only at Universal's Island of Adventure. And final geek fact! Noel is an eldritch god of darkness and the creator of the symbiotes. While residing in the primordial void that exists between the sixth and seventh cosmoses, he was awakened when the Celestials invaded his kingdom of darkness with light. Noel was chosen by the Celestials to serve as the King in Black, but he rejected the responsibility. With the first symbiote in the form of a sword, the Necrosword, he decapitated one of the Celestials and used its severed head's divine power to refine the blade, leaking both Noel and the Necrosword to the fallen cosmic god. Waging war against the light to return the universe to the void, Null became a legendary figure of divine terror, but eventually found himself stranded on a nameless planet after an inhabitant stole his blade and unwittingly followed in his footsteps. He experimented with his powers and discovered he could bond his living abyss with lesser creatures in the form of amorphous parasites that he could control. Establishing himself as the nexus of the hive he created, Null proceeded to conquer worlds and form a fleet of symbiote dragons. When two of his dragons arrived on Earth, the young god of thunder, Thor Odinson, struck down one of them and severed Null's connection to all of the other symbiote dragons who dissipated into countless individual symbiotes. While the other would seemingly be killed by Thor in a mid-air battle, its body plummeting to the depths of the North Sea. Merging with the closest hosts they could find, the hive was now infected with concepts of honor and nobility. So the symbiotes turned on Null and trapped him at the core of the throne world, rebrounding themselves Clintar, out of their word, for Cage. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another Daily Comic and Collectible, and I hope to see you again Wednesday. This is Cut Fan Comics Man, and I'll catch you on the flip, baby. Over and out. Yeah.